Well, we're extremely symmetric. In the picture of uh, Leonardo da Vinci, you can see, as you know already, we have two arms, two legs, two eyes, and also inside our brain is symmetrical. There are two hemispheres and they are very much similar. Uh, the advantage of that symmetry is of course that if one side becomes damaged, we still have rest capacity for survival in the other side. Um, so that's nice. But there is also um, asymmetry in nature, both in vertebrates and in invertebrates. And walking on the beach of Ameland last week, I found this whelk. And if you compare it to the whelk in the picture, you can see it's anti-symmetric. Um, they're mirror images of each other. And the forma sinostrosa is extremely rare. Um, however, the snail inside is quite symmetrical. Um, if we take a closer look at the brain, and you can see inside that circle that if you look at the gyri, uh, there's asymmetry there. It's subtle, but it's there. The question is, what is the functional uh, significance of that asymmetry? And that asymmetry is not only there at the behavioral level, sorry, um, yeah. but it's also there, uh, sorry, at the anatomical level, but it's also there at the behavioral level. Uh, for example, in humans, we know from dichotic listening or emotional face recognition that where you tend to read emotions from the left part of the face and generate emotions on your left part of, the, of your own face, uh, there's a symmetry at the behavioral level. And one of the most salient characteristics of asymmetry in human behavior may be hand preference. So how many of you are left-handed? Well, let me guess, about 10% of the Dutch population, and that fits quite well with the amount of left-handers in this audience. Um, so it was long thought that hand preference was a unique feature and behavioral asymmetries may be also a unique feature of human behavior. Uh, but over the last 20, 20 years, it became clear that that's not the case. Um, paw preference has been studied in many species and been found in species like spider, birds, parrots, for example, uh, and apes. Uh, for chimpanzee, for example, and fishing with a stick, uh, shows that 70% of the chimps uh, do that with their left hand and 30% with their right hand or paw. But these dimorphisms are much less strong in the other species than they are in the human, and handedness is a very extreme example of that. The question then is, would this have been selected upon in evolution? And if so, what has been selected upon? That's a very interesting question, which probably is hard to answer, but we'll make, try to make a start with that. So, a source of behavior and a source of behavioral asymmetries is in the brain, no doubt. Um, Functions represented in the brain are spread over homologous areas in the left hemisphere and the right hemisphere. But usually there is dominance on one side for that function. That is what we call lateralization. So it's public knowledge that language is on the left, in the left brain, as they say, visuospatial capacities and creativity is in the right brain, logical reasoning in the left brain, but as I said before, this is spread over the hemispheres, uh, homologous areas. A recent ad on the Dutch radio, 
as a consultancy agency stating, promoting its personal by stating, well, there's left-brain people that do good logical thinking, there's creative people, there's right-brain people, but our personal was selected to combine both. Well, this is nonsense, of course. It's not like that. Um, let's take a closer look at lateralization. If we have these two well-known tasks, language and visual spatial, that are clearly being lateralized at the brain level, we may suppose there are four possible lateralization patterns. The typical lateralization pattern shows language on the left, visual spatial on the right. Then there is a mirrored pattern, language on the right, visual spatial dominant represent in the left hemisphere. And there may be two ipsilateral patterns of lateralization, left ipsilateral with both functions on the left side, right ipsilateral with both functions dominant on the right side. The question now is, do these patterns exist? And so we set off with a number of research questions departing from this. The first question then is, do these patterns at all exist in nature? The second question is, do, does the prevalence of these patterns differ between left and right handers? The third question relates to the evolutionary question. Is if we have these different patterns, maybe one of these patterns is functionally superior over the others. So if we look at performance related to that type of lateralization pattern, would, that, would the performance of that subject be superior compared to subjects with different atypical types of patterns. Right. Um, and if so, if we can find that sort of superiority related to one of the patterns, then that might be a property that evolution might select on. So, let's have a look, look at data. We have data of 148 subjects by now uh, that were assessed. Obviously, you have to measure the dominance during task execution, which hemisphere is dominant. For that, we used a method called functional transcranial Doppler. Basically, it measures the increase in blood flow when you start doing a certain task. And if that increase in blood flow is larger in the left hemisphere, then in the right hemisphere, the conclusion is that the function is dominant in the left hemisphere. So that way we measured the dominance for a language task and a visual spatial task, and the results you can see in the left table. You will find the four patterns that I indicated, and you can see that the typical lateralization for language and visual spatial is present in 53 percent of the subjects. And please note that this group of subjects, half of them were left-handed, half of them were right-handed, because we needed data for the second question. Um, the ipsilateral patterns each uh, were present in about 15 percent of the people, and the mirrored was rarer, but still present in 6 percent of the subjects. Okay, how about the second question? Do left-handers and right-handers differ in the prevalence of these patterns. If we look at the lower right table for the visual spatial task, we do not find very much difference in prevalence between the left-handers and the right-handers. But if we look at the language function for the, those with a typical language lateralization in the left hemisphere, there's hardly any difference between the left-handers and the right-handers. But among the left-handers, there were more people with a lateralization of language dominant in the right hemisphere, 30%. <coughs> so yes, we found some difference there, and it's task-dependent. 
Um, so let's move to the question whether lateralization pattern, one lateralization pattern is superior over the other. <coughs> For the single tasks, so if you do a language task or if you do a visual spatial task, we did not find any, find any relation with pattern of lateralization and also not with strength of lateralization. We made tasks also the situation a bit more difficult or rather more difficult by co ha combining the tasks into a dual task. In the dual task, you have to do both tasks at the same time. In that condition, we found relationships with lateralization pattern. In this graph um, of, uh, but we found this relationship only in a gr subgroup of 26 right-handers. Um, in this graph on the horizontal axis, you see the strengths of lateralization over both tasks. On the vertical axis, you see the performance measure in the dual task. In fact, it's a z-score. And there is a difference between the typical and the atypical group. The typicals are the black dots, individual data of uh, each individual has a dot. Uh, the atypical pattern of lateralization, so ipsilateral or mirror, is in the triangles. And the performance in the typicals was better than in the atypicals, and the size of that effect is shown by the blue arrow. But also, in the atypicals, there was a relation with strengths of lateralization, a negative relationship, meaning that increased strengths of lateralization meant worse performance. So let's get to the overview of the research questions and the answers. Yes, we found different patterns of lateralization. They exist, and they're individual. Um, even with only looking at two different tasks. Did we find differences in lateralized patterns in prevalence between the left and the right handers? Well, this was found to be task dependent and only present in the language task and only in the left hander showing more lateralization to the contra, usual contralateral side, that is the right hemisphere. Um, we found the third question, we found that there was in very difficult task conditions, the dual task condition, a relation and that a superiority of the typical lateralized pattern and in the relation to an evolutionary interpretation, this is, ex this is extremely difficult to answer and very premature with what I'm going to say now, but if there is any possibility from our data to indicate, then what is being selected upon is right-handers with a typical pattern of lateralization for these two tasks. Thank you very much. <laughs>